Hi team, how are we doing? So, how do you get the cup car off the line effectively just using your foot clutch, not using the, uh, the steering wheel mounted clutch paddles? I'm going to show you how today. This is what I do and it guarantees me a pretty solid launch every time and uh, yeah, allows me to be first away from the lights most races. So, let's get on with it. I'll show you how. We'll also show you how to do the same thing with the V3s. Um, obviously, we haven't got the software with those, but we can manipulate the pedals mechanically to get the same results. This might also work on some other pedal sets, so uh, keep watching. Might just give you an idea to help you out. Let's get on with it. First thing we need to do is pull up the HS software. Um, Basically, with both the, the methods I do with the, the sprints and the V3s, you need to calibrate the pedals as completely normal um, with iRacing to begin with. So that's that's a given. So make sure the pedals are calibrated as standard. Um, so with HS, make sure you've got the calibration um, settings on the software and then go into iRacing and calibrate the pedals as per normal without doing anything to them at all. So then with the, uh, with the HS pedals, so what we're aiming for is to get the car away from a line with as minimal risk of wheel spin as possible. So we can see here, I've got the uh, the HS software opened up. Make sure you've got it on the calibration page first. Like I said, get it calibrated in iRacing. And then what we do, we actually make up a new profile. So I've got one just for the cup car, just with a bit of brake boost. I've got, actually got two for the cup cars. So I've got a, Cup car GD3 with brake boost, so it's got slightly higher um, brake pressure, and then just my normal cup car one. So I think the normal one's about 70% on the brakes, and my brake boost is about 85 with 58 kilos on the pedal. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the brakes, we're here to talk about the clutch. So what you can see I've done here is calibrated. So when the pedal, when the clutch pedal is down to 100%, it's only going to 54%. So it's only registering 54% in iRacing. Now, the reason we've done that is that on the start line, we're basically just gonna hold the clutch down fully to the floor, so the pedal's all the way to the floor. Full throttle on the car, and then as the lights go out, we're gonna pull the car into first gear. So we're gonna flick the paddle, pull the car into first gear. Now, 54% is set, so it's just enough to get the cup car. When you pull it into gear, the cup car will actually jolt forward. There's just enough clutch slip to get the car into gear and moving forward with a very tiny amount of wheel spin. And from there on, as soon as the car is rolling forward, it's actually starting to accelerate, then all you have to do is bleed the pressure out for the last 50% of the uh, the clutch pedal, which gives you an immensely quick and uh, pretty much guaranteed start every time. So why is it fast? Well, one, when the lights go out, you only have to do one thing, which is react with your fingers, which is probably the quickest reaction you have in your body. So all you have to do as the lights go out is pull the paddle shifter into gear. So that one gives you a very quick reaction. So your car is pretty much guaranteed to be moving off the line faster than everyone else's to begin with. Second point is that because the car is already moving and uh, is, is actually You'll, fit, you'll see it when I do a demo. The car accelerates quite quickly just from 54% of clutch. And then all you have to do then is just steadily bleed out the last part of the clutch. Now you can see on the map as well, the way I've got the map set, there's actually um, some drops in that map there. And that's to represent as a car sort of getting up to near the top of its torque range. What we want to do, we want to try and keep the revs up on the car, keep it in its in its window of maximum torque, so it's getting full acceleration. But we also want to feed that clutch in as, as harshly as we can to keep that momentum going. So I've, I've been jiggling with the map, and this is pretty much what I've come up with. So just take a screenshot of that, and then if you recreate those settings, should be all good. Anyway, so that's what I've done with the map, and this is how we get the car off the line. So let's jump in to the car. Okay, so we just pulled the car out of the pits. As you can see, we're at Spa. Um, 
no particular reason. I just happen to be practicing for a race here this week, so we, we use this track. So what we do, I'll just run you through steadily um, exactly what I'm doing before I start the car off the line, and then we'll jump into an AI race, and I'll do a couple of uh, starts, and we'll see if we can um, show off this procedure and, you know, exactly with the, with the start lights as well, and then make some positions up during the race. So first thing to do, Obviously, you're up, you start off in the grid, but um, if you're doing like me, a practice start, so roll up, come to a complete stop, take your foot off the brake, get the car into neutral. Then all I do is push the clutch pedal down. Now you can see as I push the clutch pedal down, there's my mouse. As I push the clutch pedal down, you can see the blue line coming up on the right-hand side there, and that is your clutch position. And we want it to be just in line with the uh, with the nook on the end there, that's perfect sort of height. Now we know on the pedals, uh, for the HS pedals, that's around 54%. But take note of that as well when we set the V3s up, because that's around the same position that we need to be. So get the clutch pedal fully down, and then all we do then is go full throttle. And when we're ready, we've just got to pull the car into gear, and then we we'll steadily release the clutch pedal as the car pulls away. So one now, the gear and go, and then just gently bleed the pedal off and pull away. And what we're trying to do is keep the revs up as high as we can because we want maximum torque, but obviously we don't want to slip the clutch too much. We want to try and just get it to a point where the revs are just starting to dip. So we're, we're easing the clutch out just as we hear the revs starting to dip, just steady down on easing the clutch out. And then if they start to take off again, back up to rev limit, then obviously you can pull the clutch out a bit faster. So it's a bit of a balancing act, but you can see from the moment we pull the car into the gear, it's rolling forward. It actually spins the wheels for a very, very tiny split second. It spins the wheels, fires the car forward, and then it will begin to roll. So what I'll do, I'll just do one now. I'm not gonna let the clutch out. We'll just see how fast this car rolls forward. Um, just by pulling it into gear with the clutch at 54%. So, pull power, pull it into gear, and you can see there, rolling forward quite quickly, but it is off the rev limit. So we'll do it again now. So clutch down, full power. I'm gonna bleed the clutch out this time. So, into gear, and then just listen to the revs, bleed the clutch out. Because I'm concentrating on filming, I keep missing my second gear. Try to uh, change up the second as well, a little early. Try not to bounce it off the limiter because you're just slowing yourself down off the start line again then. So you want to, if anything, change up to a second a little bit earlier um, and try and get that clutch out before you do the change. So here we go again. Muppet. Right, here we go again. So in neutral, full power, clutch down, pull it in the gear. And there we go. Job good. Right, let's jump into a AI race, and then we'll uh, we'll see if this works off the line. Okay, so we're going to jump into a race at Spa. Um, 35 cars on the grid. I'm going to start right at the back in 35th place. We're going to use this clutch launch and see how far up the pack we can get before turn one. So let's get on with it. All right, so down on the grid, first thing I do is get the clutch down and then I wait for the red lights to come on and I go to full throttle. And the last thing I do is as the greens come on, pull it to gear. Full throttle, wait for the greens, in the gear and then ease the clutch out. Up the second, up the third, up the fourth, you can dive down inside, up the fifth. normal start now with the uh, sort of standard eye racing start so foot hard down on the brake pedal pop the car into gear and then go full throttle and then as soon as the lights go green we're just going to lift off the brake pedal and let the car sort of pull away um, people refer to it as a launch control start but it's not really it's just pulling the car away but we'll see how it goes um, good thing with this one it's pretty much guaranteed as long as you've got your foot hard enough down the brake pedal the car isn't going to roll forward so you won't get a jump start and then literally all you do is, as the lights go green, jump off a brake and the car will go and there's no wheel spin. So it's um, it's a nice safe start. Um, if you want to get away, it gets away pretty quick and yeah, 
sort of minimal risk of jump starting. I often use this when I'm at the back of the grid um, and I don't want to push too hard on that one so I'll just toot all the car away nice and safely. Anyway, let's give it a go. So foot down, hard on the brake pedal, car in gear and then we'll wait for the lights to come on. We're going to go full throttle. That's the only thing with this, you have to wait forever. So full throttle now. Wait for the greens, off the brake. Up to second, up to third. Too bad, didn't feel as good as the other one though. I think we got quite a the grid. Okay, so back in iRacing, I've actually hooked the uh, V freeze up. I've got them on my lap. Um, so you'll see straight away, and they're freaking ridiculously heavy. Um, you'll see straight away, they look a bit different to normal V freeze. They are. They are still V3s, um, just I had to make my own little box up to mount them on my rig because it's ever so slightly too narrow to fit them as standard. So I've had to remove the sides and make a little box. Anyway, so that's why they look a little weird, but they are the same, um, exactly the same in terms of, of design and operation. They just look a little funky. Um, so I'm just going to show you. Hold on, we'll get that up. Just going to show you on here. So I've got the pedals hooked up. So obviously you've got throttle. Oh, I've got the brake, which is really hard to use my my hands, and then the clutch. So I've got the clutch pedal, so it's set to uh, calibrate this run at 100% of a normal clutch. So we're just going to drop in and calibrate the pedals. So we'll do the throttle. It's done. The brake. <laughs> and then the clutch. So calibrate the clutch fully to 4095, and that is done. Right, now, what we want to do is jump in the car. Uh, flick this up as well. So you can see here, if I push the clutch pedal down, obviously we're getting full clutch. Um, you can see it on the uh, iRacing data there. The little blue line there goes up all the way to fully. Now what we want it to do is to stop around about here. So level with that little divot in the end, in the end. So what we do is we actually mechanically um, adjust the clutch pedal on the sprint. So we're going to wind down the adjuster on the spring on the clutch pedal. We're going to wind it down towards the back of the pedal. So winding it down more, which actually gives you a shorter brake pedal. So I'm winding away now. Obviously, it probably looks like I'm doing something else on camera. <laughs> Have to bear with me on this one. So I'm winding down now and that's full pedal so I've got the clutch down fully now and you can see we're getting there we're getting pretty close uh, just need another couple of turns on that adjust the nut this is not what it's there for but it, it does the job that we need it to do so now come down and there we go we're actually a little bit low so just back it off a bit but what we've done is mechanically adjusted the clutch to be just on the biting point. So when we put the car into gear, it'll start rolling forward just like it did with the uh, sprint pedals. Now the only pain in the, the butt with this one is that because it's a mechanical method, um, obviously you're not gonna have your pedals where you can. If you can take your pedals off and sit them on your lap, it's really easy, like I've just proven. Um, it's a bit of a pain when they're in the sim because you have to jump up, make an adjustment, jump back, have a look at the screen. So it can be a little tedious uh, to get it set up always go for error on the side of caution rather than trying to get these pedals set to the point of, of absolute maximum launch. What you have to bear in mind is that um, conditions in iRacing change, obviously track conditions change and temperature of the track, these all make difference, uh, all make the result of launches much more different. So error on the side of caution to get the car just sort of rolling away from the line um, so that, you know, in some circumstances, you might find that you just get a, a bit of wheel spin away from the line if you've got it set way too close to the edge. So, yeah, around about there should be good. So, we're going to do this now. Problem is now I haven't got my feet. I don't know. I'm going to pop pedals down on the rig. Oh, my God. Where they go? Where they fit? G 
Yankee. All right. Oh, got my knees up around my my doobies. All right. So, foot on the clutch. We've got full throttle as well. Be quite hard to do, but should give us an idea. Anyway, so same as we do. Um, With the uh trying to glide into pit wall. I feel like I'm driving a kid's car now. My knees bent nearly in half. Oh it breaks. Alright. So same as we do with the HSs, so full clutch down. We're gonna go full throttle and then just pull the car into gear and launch it away. The pedals aren't bolted down, they're flapping everywhere. So this isn't gonna be anywhere near ideal, but it should get the job done. So, full throttle, hit the gear. There we go, it did pull away. So, the wheel spin there is just my pedals flapping around underneath my feet. So we'll try again, full throttle, full clutch. It'll get away. So you can't do it. Wow, brakes. This is very stiff. So you can get a pretty good launch with a V3s as well. That's one way of mechanically doing it. Um, and that was the way I was doing it for most of the season um, last year when I had the V3s fitted to the rig. So there you go. As I said, air on the side of caution with the clutch setting. So in the HS sprint files, 54% is a sweet spot. 53 I just found every now and again. I just get a bit of wheel spin as I pulled it into gear. And with the HSs, it's around about there on the map, so you can see when it's in neutral, it's just in line with the uh, the bottom of the end there. So right at that crevice, that's where the blue line needs to be. And that'll give you a pretty good start. Good luck with that. And like I said earlier in the video, you might be able to jerry-rig this onto your pedal. So I was thinking like Logitech G29s, Maybe you could just put a little support under the pedal, um, block of wood, tennis ball under that clutch pedal just to hold it at that opportune moment that you need it to uh, to be at and then release it. So might just give you an idea or a, a, a solution that could get your brain operating and um, you come up with a, a great solution for the pedals you've got. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, please do subscribe to the channel for more give this video a like and a, a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you think um, if you've got any other topics you want us to cover please let me know in the comments anyway thanks for watching cheers goodbye